Good morning, everyone. I'm Friedel Seible. I'm the Dean of the Jacob School of Engineering, and I want to welcome all of you uh, to uh, UC San Diego and to the Jacob School of Engineering. What we want to do in the next uh, half hour or so, I want to give you a quick introduction to the School of Engineering. The first thing I want to do is congratulate all the prospective students. You're an amazing bunch, and you have accomplished already quite something. Namely, you have been admitted to the Jacobs School of Engineering here at UC San Diego. So your average uh, GPA is 4.09, and your average SAT scores here in the Jacobs School are 2042, OK? But I don't have to tell you how good you are. Uh, when you look at it, we had over 12,000 applications to the Jacobs School of Engineering, and we will in the end end up with about 850 of you here. So 7% of the students that apply to the Jacobs School will end up in the Jacobs School. This is how selective the process is, okay? But first of all, again, congratulations uh, for being admitted here to the Jacobs School. That's already quite an accomplishment. So let me just tell you a little bit about the Jacob School of Engineering. We have uh, almost 200 faculty here in the Jacob School. And uh, as you can see, over 10% are members of the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, this is the highest distinction you can get in this country as an engineer to be elected to the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, we do not have Nobel Prizes in engineering, so this is the highest distinction you can get as an engineer to be elected to the academy. And to have 10% of a faculty in the academy is a very large percentage. Uh, there are actually three branches to our national academies, the Academy of Engineering, the Academy of Science, and then the, uh, the Institute of Medicine. And there are only nine people in the entire country that are members of all three branches of the academy and four of them are here in the Jacob School of Engineering. So uh, it's a very distinguished faculty, and uh, you will be taught by some of the world's very best professors. With over 6,000 students in engineering, we are the largest engineering school in California, but we are not just the largest, we are also one of the best. Okay? When you look at the various rankings, we are definitely penetrating the world's top 10 research engineering schools. Okay? And that's exactly where I, as Dean of Engineering, want the Jacobs uh, School to be, to be one of the recognized top 10 research engineering schools in the world. Uh, our bioengineering program has always been ranked number one okay, in the country. Uh, and UCSD as a whole has been ranked now for two years in a row as the uh, nation's uh, best university for social mobility, research excellence, and service by Washington Monthly. So uh, you're definitely at the right place here. There are two things which we are uh, focusing on, uh, and this is the human capital and the intellectual capital. And uh, these words are carefully chosen. I actually stole them from Ron Sugar, the CEO of Northrop Grumman at the time. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, human resources and, in, and intellectual property. I'm talking about human capital and intellectual capital. The human capital, this is you guys, our students, okay? If we are not doing a good job educating you that your skills are marketable when you're done here with your engineering degree, and not just locally, but nationally, internationally, worldwide, then we are doing a lousy job. So our job is to turn you into human capital, where you can actually market your skills across the entire world. And if we just do research and not transfer our discoveries out into the real world, again, we are not doing the right thing. Then we are just generating intellectual property, but not intellectual capital. So we need to take our discoveries from the research lab to the marketplace. This is what intellectual capital is all about. So this is our focus, and we're doing this uh, with our mission here to educate tomorrow's technology leaders. Again, this is you guys, and if you just want to be an average engineer, you're not at the right place. We are educating tomorrow's technology leaders, not average engineers here in the Jacob School. We conduct leading-edge research and drive innovation. Uh, we want you to participate as undergraduate student in research projects. There is a reason why you're at a top research engineering school, okay? namely to participate in research. 
you learn your subject much better by hands-on experience in the research lab. And then we want you to drive innovation. We want you to be entrepreneurial. We want to instill a spirit of entrepreneurism in you. Uh, that sets us, you apart from uh, students from other universities, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more. And then we want to transfer our discoveries to the benefit of society. This is what engineering is all about. We have some of the very best world-leading research facilities here, and it doesn't matter in which department uh, you're uh, studying. Uh, and I will just show you a few examples, and uh, I apologize because I will also show you examples from structural engineering since this is my field, okay? And since I started the Department of Structural Engineering, but you find similar great facilities all across uh, the Jacob School. So on the left is our California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, for example, where we have some of the world's leading visualization research going on with uh, virtual reality environments, uh, with multi-tile displays. On the right side, the power labs. Uh, these are the laboratories I started when I came here 28 years ago. They are by now the world's largest structural testing facility where we test full-scale structures under simulated seismic loads or blast loads to failure. And then in the middle, you see a picture of our San Diego Supercomputer Center one of the original National Science Foundation funded supercomputer centers where they do a lot of data intensive computing. We are known for uh, big data, data management, data intensive computing, data curation, data search, and so on. So let me just show one example here, a little uh, video about what you can do with big data. This is an earthquake happening on the San Andreas Fault in Palm Springs and then propagating towards the Los Angeles Basin, okay? And we can simulate how the entire ground in Southern California then shakes based on the soil conditions and the geological conditions. And there you can see in San Diego, uh, shaking stopped already in the LA Basin, it still keeps shaking after 150 seconds, 160, 170 seconds. That's the basin effect in Los Angeles where you have much longer shaking then and much more severe earthquakes than here in San Diego. So you're at the right place, okay? <laughs> uh, as I said, I'll show you a few examples uh, from the power labs. And this is a research facility I put together. This is the world's only outdoor shake table, which we have here at UCSD. You cannot see that any place else in the world where you can put structures of any size on the shake table and send earthquakes through, okay? This is a seven-story concrete shear wall structure, okay, which we put on our table, and that is only a quarter of the total uh, cable, uh, table capacity, so we can put structures four times bigger than that on the shake table and test them for earthquakes. You see how every crack in the building develops, okay? This is how we do earthquake engineering research. You all probably know the Coronado Bridge here in San Diego, and uh, this bridge crosses an active earthquake fault, the Silver Strand Fault, and our seismologists tell us that we can expect a three-foot horizontal offset when this fault ruptures. So three-foot horizontal, they just cannot tell me between which two piers of the bridge. And so I, as a bridge designer, then have to design the bridge uh, that this fault rupture can occur between any two piers. And so we retrofitted then the Coronado Bridge 10 years ago by putting the entire bridge on big rubber bearings, okay? On every pier, there are four of these bearings, and the whole idea is that during the earthquake, then the pier can shake, okay? And these soft bearings don't allow the motion going into the bridge structure itself, and so the bridge doesn't even feel the earthquake. But bearings of that size up to that point had never been built or tested anywhere in the world, okay? And so we needed to develop a testing system and then test these bearings to show that they can actually take these three-foot deformations, okay?
So these are tests where the bearing itself is loaded with 600,000 pounds vertically, okay, and then it has to go through the earthquake motion. So these are the kind of research facilities you see here at the Jacobs School. And you see similar facilities in every single one of our departments. We also have probably the largest corporate affiliates program of any engineering school in the world. Uh, and I think I know them all, and our program is much bigger than uh, uh, corporate affiliate programs at other engineering schools, where we work very closely with uh, these corporate partners uh, on the two items which I mentioned, on the human capital and the intellectual capital side. Okay? Uh, when I became dean 10 years ago, I asked uh, the same question to all of these partners. What is the most important attribute you expect in our students? And it was amazing, that same answer that came back every single time, teamwork. These days, no single engineering problem is solved by individuals anymore. It's always by teams of engineers. Okay? And so we listened to that, and we started a team internship program where we are sending you guys, our students, to our corporate partners for the summer in multidisciplinary teams. And it started eight years ago with one team of three students at Abiomed in Boston, where they manufacture the artificial heart. And uh, uh, they asked me at the time to send three students to Boston for the summer, an electrical engineering student, a mechanical engineering student, and a bioengineering student to design and prototype the external battery pack for the artificial heart. And our undergraduate students did that in 10 weeks. Okay? And this is what's being used now as the external battery pack. Cost the company about $40,000 to fly the students out for the summer, to rent them an apartment for the summer, to give them a rental car for the summer that they can do something on weekends, and then to pay them prevailing hourly wages. Okay? If that would have been a corporate internal R&D project, it uh, would have been a multi-million dollar project, and they still would be working on it today, probably. <laughs> so this is what our students can do already as undergraduate students. And this team internship concept really has taken on like wildfire. We had this last summer, we had 76 teams of students in 36 companies. And we had already five international teams. This is another one of my goals. I always tell people that I need to take the Jacob School global. And that does not mean for us to start a satellite campus in Beijing or in New Delhi or someplace, but to give our students, to give you guys the opportunity to become global citizens. And what better way to do that than on a working on a well-defined project in a multidisciplinary team with one of our corporate partners for the summer abroad. Okay? And so you can see here, we had last year, we had a team in Liechtenstein, that's that little, little country between Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. We had two teams in China, one in Beijing, one in Guangzhou, and we had a team in Japan and one in South Korea. Okay? And so already for this summer also, we have uh, the latest I heard, at least five, if not seven international teams, uh, team projects lined up. And the program is still rapidly expanding. I get very interesting comments back from our industry partners uh, about this team internship program. The most uh, frequent comment I get is that it's so much easier to have a team of interns than to have individual interns. When they hire individual interns, it takes one of the corporate engineers to babysit the intern for the summer. When they hire a team of students, they answer 90% of the questions they have amongst themselves. And then they drive each other to solve the given project, always ahead of schedule. And then the students come back and tell me at the end of the summer that they learned so much from each other because they come from different departments. The best comment I got, uh, we learned so much more than we ever learned in the Jacob School. Hey. Just fine for me to hear. So let me just uh, run two quick videos about this team internship experience. I've had various internships over the past few years, and this has definitely been the most interesting. We worked on trying to get a, a system that can allow more renewables to be put on the grid. Yeah, we found the best approach is to use some sort of energy storage. I mean, a cloud goes over the city, and all of a sudden your power drops. If we have a whole lot of solar panels spread across, then we need to have some way to you know, sort of buffer those differences. And so a battery system that can notice this, react to it, that was our, what we were in charge of designing. 
I think the experience that uh, the students get in the TIP program, in the, in the projects they work on, at least at our company, they're very real world projects. It's very applicable experience. We have them solving some real problems that we're facing. I liked it a lot because it prepared me uh, for the real world and uh, I, I realized that this is what I want to do. So we have extended the program already beyond the Jacob School. If companies want uh, uh, an MBA student from the Radio School as part of the team, as you have seen here, then we uh, 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 expand it to other students across campus. Uh, the last two summers, our teams at SDG&E, they all uh, develop patents at the end of the summer, and the students are actually named on the patents okay, that were filed afterwards. And another quick video. I mean, that's one great thing about oh. this project that we got to work with, like, cutting-edge technology. Not everyone gets to work with, like, a multi-touch <laughs> table. Like, even when I mention it to my friends, they're so amazed that I'm able to, you know, play with a table like this. So, you know, it's, mm. it's definitely uh, out of this world. The most exciting thing that I learned was how to interact with this touch environment. The project that our team worked on was focused on something that we're in the process of commercializing already. And in fact, what they did was to help us commercialize it a little bit faster and a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And so the actual project uh, was not even mentioned here. It was not just playing with a touch table. You can see the cell phone sitting there on the touch table. Is How do you charge cell phones without plugging them in by just placing them on the touch table, okay? So that was the actual research project. So all of these projects, uh, these are not graduate students. These are undergraduate students. This is you guys next year or in the next four years, okay? This is what we are trying to uh, uh, provide you with this kind of learning environment. Uh, during the academic year, we have a similar program, uh, namely multidisciplinary team experience called TIES, Teams in Engineering Service, where we are sending multidisciplinary teams of students to nonprofit organizations to solve real world engineering problems for these nonprofit organizations. Uh, there, you don't get paid for, but you get academic credit for these TIES projects. And recently we expanded to global ties because we have now four or five projects where we work globally and then during the summer we take these projects then uh, to different countries around the world to really implement then uh, real, real world engineering solutions worldwide through this ties program. We also have a thriving uh, engineering community here at the Jacob School. We have 32 pre-professional student organizations. So there's no shortage of uh, opportunity for you to get involved. And getting involved is one of the most important and most critical aspects of graduating with an engineering degree here in the Jacob School. Nationwide and here in the Jacob School too, we have a retention rate of 56% meaning that only one out of two students that starts engineering graduates with an engineering degree because our curriculum is really demanding. Okay? That does not mean that you're not graduating with another degree from UCSD but not with an engineering degree. But for us, for me as Dean of Engineering, this is a waste of your talent, a waste of our time okay? if you're not graduating with an engineering degree. And so we really want to uh, raise these uh, retention rates and get a much higher graduation rate. And the best way to do that is to get engaged. I don't know a single student that is involved in the leadership of one of our 32 pre-professional student orgs that has not graduated. Okay? So getting involved is one of the best ways to ensure that you graduate. Why? because you get to know other students, you learn to uh, find friends, comrades, you build a support system, okay, which allows you then to really uh, uh, master the difficult curriculum we put in front of you. Through the student orgs, we also do a lot of outreach uh, to uh, middle schools, high schools, uh, in the STEM area, in science, uh, technology, engineering, and math, okay? because we are facing a real shortage of engineers in the coming years. The Obama administration actually wants to double the engineering graduates over the next 10 years. We graduate right now about 60 or 80,000 engineers in this country, and they want to increase it to 180,000 engineers uh, per year. But these numbers are very, very small compared to the numbers of engineering talent that is generated in Asia, for example. 
that's in the tens of millions, okay? And so we really have a lot of uh, catching up to do, and this is the good news for all of you. There's a very bright uh, light at the end of the tunnel after your four years, namely that uh, there are good engineering jobs waiting. The bad news for your parents is that chances are, being here in the Jacob School, you're not done in four years because you go on to graduate school, okay? Uh, through some of these student orgs, you can also participate in amazing projects like this one here. Hi there, we're at UC San Diego. My name is Tim Havard, Jacqueline Yu, Jeffrey Meyer, and Arvin LaRosa. We're here studying the free stream behavior of water and microgravity. This is very badly needed research. To do this research, uh, we are mainly con uh, concerned with our breakup distance of the column of water, uh, depending on flow rate and uh, exit uh, diameter as pertaining to urethra size. We have an experiment here that basically uh, fires a column of water into the main observation area, which is then observed by two orthogonal view cameras. Uh, to get our main positional data as well as our flow rate will be taken. We're using this data to help figure out basically how somebody pees in space and where the best point would be to collect the stream, just to help design better collection devices for the astronauts to use. Or right, so when we were in space, you know, <laughs> um, the liquid actually traveled a lot further down the, um, our chamber here that we have, and um, it went a lot further than we expected it to. It tripped me up because we actually turned it on and it was like large bubbles like flowing around the entire chamber as the liquid was gathering. It hit the wall and it just like big bubbles are in the chamber and stuff like that. So it was just, I thought it was really cool to see. You know, from my point, from my vantage point, it was really amazing to just watch that stuff. So it was really good. So to do experiments like this as undergraduate student in space, okay, in zero gravity, flying up in airplanes and then sharp dives, that's when you get this this few uh, seconds or half minute of zero gravity then, that's when you can perform then these kind of experiments. So this is research that is not performed by graduate students, this is by our undergraduate students, they are doing the research here. Again, through the student orgs every year, our undergraduate students are putting a DCAF together, Disciplines of Engineering Career Fair. And they, the students put that on by themselves, okay? This is not done by the administration. So this last year, we had 2,500 students uh, participate. They brought 78 companies on board, okay? And uh, our students are entrepreneurial, so they are charging these companies to come for this career fair, and so they netted $75,000 from that career fair. So these are the kind of uh, uh, opportunities you have, too, to connect then with uh, recruiters from uh, over 70 companies <clears throat> to find uh, then uh, the best engineering jobs. We also expect you to have fun while you're here at UCSD. Oops. Uh -huh. They're racing down the there track now here, neck and neck. And it looks like Team Rocket, and it's Team Rocket by a nose. We're on Peterson Hill, which is one of the steepest hills on the campus for UCSD. And uh, what's going on is the Junkyard Derby, which is similar to the show, like Junkyard Wars. People make teams, they make up their names. As you can see, they're uh, Space Ninja Lumberjacks from Space. Really, we just wanted a really sturdy frame. So we just uh, got a bunch of pieces of steel, made a box out of it. The stick is there because we're wider in the back than in the front. And last time I hit a cone because I don't know how wide it is. So right now we have six engineering departments here in the Jacob School of Engineering. Mechanical and aerospace engineering, electrical and computer engineering, computer science and engineering, bioengineering, structural engineering, and nanoengineering. The three on the left are the more traditional ones. These are our big mainstay departments. 
The three on the right is what I call lovingly our boutique departments, even so the student numbers are getting very big in those two. But the reason why they are called boutique uh, is because they are first of their kind in this country or worldwide. We gave already bioengineering degrees in the 1960s here, where no other university was even thinking about bioengineering. When I came here, I started the structural engineering department 28 years ago. And while structural engineering clearly is not a new profession, but in all other universities, uh, it is part of civil engineering. Uh, but we expanded it beyond civil structures to aerospace structures, offshore structures, mechanical structures, and recently also biostructures. Because in the end, when you think about it, the materials are the same. Okay? The structural mechanics better be the same. So why not look at structural engineering as this activity that crosses all other engineering fields? And so we're the only university where you actually get degrees in structural engineering, not like I did my three degrees in civil engineering. Okay? And then in a similar fashion, just four years ago, we started the world's first nano-engineering department uh, because our industry partners came to me and said, we need a workforce that is trained at that nano-scale for nanofluidics, medical devices, drug delivery. Okay, this is where we need a new workforce. And uh, so we started the world's first nanoengineering department, and we are giving now degrees in nanoengineering. So it just shows that uh, here in the Jacob School, we are not waiting for the MITs or the Stanfords of the world to show us what to do next. When we believe in it, we do it. And this is where then our reputation also comes from. You can see here uh, Jacobs Hall. This is actually the home for electrical and computer engineering for the ECE department. Uh, but this is also where the dean's office is and where we have our student affairs office, our idea student center, our center for inclusion, diversity, excellence, and advancement. And here you can see the staff of the idea student center. And they are here to help you navigate your way through the uh, difficult uh, curriculum and uh, our campus uh, 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 problems here. As you noticed, uh, we have a lot of people here on campus today, okay, but uh, this is what you essentially get every day here. We have about 50,000 people on campus every day, 30,000 students and then 20,000 faculty and staff, okay, on a daily basis. It's like a small city. But uh, here the Idea Student Center is here to help you. Uh, they are in the on the ground floor in Jacobs Hall, and they have open house today from 10 to 2, so if you want to stop by, if you have any questions, they're more than happy to answer your questions. But you can also at any time uh, go and see them, not just today, or you can even call me as dean of the Jacobs School. I have an open door policy. I'm more than happy to meet with you. I like to meet with students. There's a reason why I became professor, because I enjoy interacting with students. And so I'll be more than happy to see you, okay? So, uh, what are the top five reasons why you really should come to the Jacob School of Engineering? Most important one is really that we are a leading research university and a leading research engineering schools where you get taught by the very best faculty and uh, in some of the very best research laboratories you can think of. Uh, we are the top university uh, uh, for social mobility, research, and service. Uh, we do a lot of outreach, but we are also thriving on excellence and research here. There's always teamwork. This is really big for us that you do, uh, as we said already, project-based learning in teams, okay? And that really uh, creates a sense of community here in the Jacob School of Engineering. And I'm very pleased to see when I go out to alumni meetings in the Bay Area or uh, some other place, and I talk to uh, alumni from uh, 10, 15 years ago, and you ask them about their experience here, they always talk about the college they graduated from, okay? When I talk to alumni from five or 10 years ago, they always tell me about the Jacobs School of Engineering. So we're really starting to brand the name Jacobs and uh, engineering in the Jacobs School. We really pride ourselves to give you a real world application of the engineering principles you learn here. So we really want you to apply what you learn immediately. But most importantly, we want you to have some fun while you're here too, okay? <clears throat> we will put a very demanding curriculum in front of you but we also want you to have fun, and I hope that these next four years, in the end, when you look back, will be, will be the best four years of your life. 
So uh, I hope to see all of you here this fall. Thank you very much.